Hey y'all, this is a penny pinching prepper and today we're going to build a potato stacker. If you uh, like what you see, consider subscribing, giving that old like button a hit. Um, and uh, without further ado, let's move on. So uh, full disclaimer, I made a little uh, boo-boo on one board measurement um which is going to be the the bottom layer of the potato stacker for those of you who watched the previous video and if you didn't i highly recommend that you do go back and watch it um it's very helpful uh so <clears throat> i told you guys that on the the bottom layer that holds the dirt for the two foot by two foot potato stacker that you were going to need one um one inch by six inch by eight foot long board you're actually going to need two of those okay and for you guys who are doing a three foot by three foot and i don't recommend going bigger than three foot by three foot all right you're going to need five of the uh one by six by eight it's just the way the math works out there's going to be some waste um then for the uh the inner layer you guys are gonna the inner frame you guys are gonna need for the two foot by two foot potato stacker you're gonna need um one two by ten by eight foot and if you guys are doing um a three foot by three foot potato stacker you guys are gonna need uh two boards um of the uh two by ten by eight all right <clears throat> once again there's going to be a little waste and I, I really don't recommend going bigger than three foot by three foot okay and then for the outer frame um for the uh this doesn't change this goes for both the two foot and the three foot okay um by three foot or two foot by two foot potato stacker um you guys are going to need two eight foot two by fours okay that's that's for both of them doesn't matter all right <clears throat> for the uh the middle layer you should have um it's real real simple for the two foot by two foot you're going to need one eight foot two by ten um, board and then you're going to need one eight foot two by four all right and then for the top layer um oh sorry for the the three footers um the only thing that changes is the uh the two by ten and you guys once again are going to need two of those uh two by ten by eight foot it's just the way the math works out um unless you want to go with 12 footers um sometimes that can cost you a lot of money uh so uh then for the top layer um you're going to need oh for the middle layer depends on how many layers you're going to need um if you're going to go with you know three layers that's all you're going to need is one middle layer if you're going to go with four layers you know you're going to need two middle layers so just keep repeating don't go more than six layers um in which that case you will need four of the middle layers uh, and then for the top layer we're basically almost going to repeat that. Basically, you're going to need for the two foot by two foot, you're going to need um, one eight foot two by ten. And for uh, the three by three, you're going to need two um, uh, two by ten by eight footers. And here um, on the outer layer, you're going to need uh, one for the two by two you're going to need one eight foot long two by four 
or you might be able to get away with using some scraps on this one. Um, for the three by three, you're going to need two eight foot long um, uh, two by four by eight. Um, but once again, you might be able to use one and get away with some scraps or actually no, sorry, that one doesn't change at all. You, you still need, so it's the same for both of you guys, uh, for the top layer, um, you, uh, for the two by fours, you only need one, uh, two by four by eight or possibly scraps. Um, the only one that changes is the, uh, two by 10, which you need one for the one eight foot for the, the two by two and you need two of them for the uh, three by three. So if you have all of those board feet that you need, depending on how many layers you need, then we can move on. So uh, before we do move on, I'm going to take a quick second, change my camera angle to give you guys a better idea of what's going on and so you can see things a little better. And uh, so one brief second and um, I'll get back with you. So guys, just a little heads up. <clears throat> I am the penny pinching prepper. <laughs> I live in an apartment. I do not need a potato stacker, so I will not be using the same lumber as you guys. I have no place to put one, and so I'm going to be building a one-fourth scale um, using some cheaper materials, uh, but it's going to go together exactly the same. Don't, don't stress the, the small things. So, uh, if you took the time and watched the first video, then you'll know all the materials that we're going to be using. And from this point on, I uh, will not be giving the three foot by three foot potato stack measurements. You guys are just going to have to fill in the blanks. Um... <clears throat> So for the people that are going to be you building the two by two, this is going to represent your two by 10. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to measure it out to two feet long. For me, I'm going to measure it out at one foot. So, Nope, got that backwards. Run the tape measure over the top of your uh, square. Uh, get it down on your, your mark, your two foot mark. I'm using a one foot mark. And we're just going to give a little brush with the pencil up here in the corner. Now you're going to do this several times because you need four of them <clears throat> for your bottom layer. So, you guys would go out to four feet. I'm going out to two. All right. And give it a little mark like that. Now, I want you guys to do this for all your boards. I'm just showing you how to, to properly mark. Now, I know it's kind of hard for you to see. There is a little bit of a glare going on. But I can see the mark. And when it gets bigger, you'll see it. But you're going to line your square up with that mark. And you're going to run it the full length of the board. A couple times. Maybe a third one if you want to. Make sure you get that line and then you come down here to the next one. And you're going to do the same. You're going to line up that mark. And you're going to run that pencil down. Alright, and get that second mark. <clears throat> now guys, 
to save a little time on this video and keep from boring you too much, I'm going to go ahead and pause it again and uh, mark all my boards like you should. All right, and I will get back to you in a moment. <laughs> Okay, so once you get the uh, inner frame all marked up, then we're going to move on out to the outer frame. And for the bottom, all right, these are going to be your legs. This represents the 2x4 by, by 8. All right. And... Uh, for the bottom layer, I told you you needed two of the eight footers, and that's because we're going to mark those off at 20 inches, and you need eight of them, okay? For me, I'm going 10 inches because I'm doing half, but you guys need 20 inches, all right? <clears throat> so, once again... Do the same where you lay your tape measure over the top. I'm going 10 inches. You guys want 20. So we'll make that mark. All right. Every 10 inches for eight of them. Use up all your board. There'll be a little bit of waste. And I will get back to you with the next measurement in a moment. Okay, guys, once you get all the uh, outer frame marked up and measured, looking good. All right. And we're going to move on to the bottom. All right, this is going to be the section that holds in the dirt for... You two by two uh, foot by foot square potato sackers. Um, you're uh, going to measure these out, which is going to be the um, one by six by eight footers. You're going to measure them out to be uh, two foot one and a half inches. All right. <clears throat> So, for me, that comes out a little bit different. For me, that comes out to one foot and three-fourths. Oh, here it is. So, uh, once again, we're just going to go quick, measure that out. All right. So, two foot... For you guys, and one and a half inches. All right. And then, once you get that marked, you just uh, go ahead and draw your line down. All right. And you're going to do that for six of them. All right, you need six two by um, two foot by one and a half inch by one inch by six inch board. Okay, all right, and that's going to be for your bottom. For you, uh, oh, for your two by two foot, let me rephrase that. You're going to need four of them. All right. For your three by three potato stacker, you're gonna need six of them. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut and finish doing my measurements real quick for this, and I will get right back with you. All right. So I think to make things a little bit easier, I'm just gonna go ahead and now give you what you need for the middle. 
which is for the uh, two foot by two foot potato stacker. All right, those are going to be cut into two foot lengths for the two by tens. All right, so you should get four out of one eight foot two by ten. All right, and uh, for the um, uh, three by three potato stacker, you're going to need um, four three foot by three foot. Um, 10 by 10 uh, boards, all right? And then for the outside um, of the frame, you're gonna need uh, eight 10 inch two by four boards, all right? So, uh, if I did my math right, that should work into one eight foot board. Uh, and then for the top layer, all right, the inner frame is, it's not going to change on the inner frame ever. So once again, for the two by two, you're going to need four two by 10 boards. Um, at two feet long, all right, and that should fit into one in uh, one eight inch board or one eight foot board, excuse me, sorry. Um, and then once again, for your three by three, you're gonna need you know four three foot ten by uh, or two by ten boards. And then for the outer layers, it's hopefully gonna be scrap. If not, I did tell you to get a, an extra two by four board, but those are only gonna be seven inches long and you need eight of them, okay? So real simple and uh, get that all measured up and uh, I'll get back to you in a second. <laughs> All right, guys, so um, another one of my little mistakes. I uh, all the time am used to using rough cut lumber out here. I mean, even though I'm in an apartment, I do all of my work out in the country. I'm not that far from the country. Um, and I'm really used to rough cut lumber. <clears throat> For those of you who went ahead and got the, the pressure treated lumber, like I recommended, it's more than likely gonna be finished wood and a 10 inch is really only going to be about nine and three quarters so every measurement um, that I told you to cut at uh, 10 inches for the outer frame which is going to be the two by fours all right um, you're going to cut each one of those dimensions on the two by four, uh, just one quarter of an inch shorter, um, than what I said. So like I said, on the 10 inch, that's going to be nine and three quarters on the seven inch. That's going to be six and three quarters by the two by fours. Okay. Um, just, it was a slip of my mind. I, I don't usually use finished wood. So, um, if you've finished marking up all your measurements, I am not going to bore you with a bunch of sawing and cutting. I'm going to go do that on my own. I highly recommend that you use a circular saw. All right. It's, it's really the best for this project. It allows you to get a good straight cut. And like I said, you need straight lumber and straight cuts uh, for this project to be able to stack properly. So, uh... Go out there, uh, cut your wood, do what you got to do, and I will get back to you in a few moments, and we will start assembling this. All right, guys. If we've got everything cut, and hopefully we did it properly, we're ready to assemble. So for assembly... A drill, just regular old power drill. 
if you have it, it'll make your life easier for your uh, getting into those two by uh, two by tens is going to be, or even the two by fours too. But it's going to be an impact drill. It'll just help sink those long screws uh, real, real good. Um, which, if you remember, I told you guys to get either galvanized three and a half inch screws or um, three and a half inch decking screws, the, the coating, coated decking screws. Um, <clears throat> I really wouldn't use anything else because then it's going to be prone to rust and it's not going to last as long. And part of saving is making it last as long as possible before you have to build or buy another. So, um, I'm going to be using some El Cheapo screws because this is not going to be a real potato stacker for me. I'm going to end up using it as a, a planter holder for a house plant. Um, you're going to need uh, your driver bit set. I think I forgot to mention these in the first video, but you're going to need a couple of uh, C-clamps for you guys doing the bigger ones. You're going to need at least three inch C-clamps. Um, you might not actually need this, but it's going to make your life way, way, way less hectic to have one of these corner uh, clamps. So, and then... Get yourself some uh, tight bond, um, preferably the uh, outdoor. I am using the indoor because once again, I'm not using it for the same thing you guys are. So get the outdoor tight bond wood glue. And last but not least, your drill bit set. Okay, so we're gonna start with the bottom layer first. All right, and for that, you're gonna get your decking screw. I'm not using a decking screw. All right. And what you're gonna wanna do is take your screw and then try to find a drill bit that is about as small as the center of the screw not the not these little ridges here but the actual ends inner part between the ridges and that one looks just a little bit too big so we'll go down to the next size and for me you'll see those are about the same size so you want to do that with your own screws to make sure that you're getting a drill bit that is going to make relief for the screws, but uh, not too much relief that they're not able to get a bite and do their job properly. So um, when doing this, try to leave as much of the, the drill bit as you can, as long as you can, because you wanna get you know, at least a two and three fourths deep, um, if not three inches deep. It's okay to leave a little bit at the end. We're just trying to prevent splitting and make our life a little bit easier. So, you guys are going to take your, uh, if you're making the two foot by two foot, you're going to take your uh, two by tens, four of them. All right, and for you three footers, it's going to be, you know, for your three foot by three foot box, that's going to be your three foot, um, three to uh, uh, two by ten, three foot two by ten. Okay, so we're going to start off with two of those. All right, and what we want to do. We want to get these things matched up 
as well as we can, all right? Oops. All right, to where your edges are as flush as you can possibly get them. That, that flush is going to be important now. All right, and then we're going to tighten it down on the one. Make sure we get it as flush as we possibly can on the second. And tighten down the second one. All right, and then ultimately, if you did it right, all right. Oh, hold on, that, that white is really bad. Let me uh, cut the light real quick, see if it helps any. All right. You're gonna try to match those corners to where they're nice and flush and you see right here right there's a little line so you got one going one way and one going the other way now if you guys know how to make your you know uh 45 degree angles and match them up nice by all means who am i to tell you how to do things um but this is to make it as simple as possible for everybody okay now what we're going to do is the board that goes all the way to the end so that you see that one goes that way and then so we can drill holes down in to this board all right so where did my pencil go I lost my pencil guys there it is so you guys want to put one uh oh hold on one second guys I had a little boo-boo all right got that fixed okay so as I was saying you guys want to do it about every two three inches put a screw where it's good enough to go right up the middle of the board here so for me just for I'm gonna go three Okay, and it doesn't have to be perfect. You can you can more measure it out if you want to, but it, it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? All right. Then once we get that done, we'll go ahead and we'll take our drill. Okay. And we're going to get it right on the spot. Now, I know mine doesn't look exactly crook or it doesn't look exactly straight, but I, I have beveled edges here. They're rounded. They're not flat. So there's a little bit of a weird lip here. So, um, but once again, like I said, I am not trying to make this for a potato stacker. I'm just trying to show you guys how to do it. So, uh, Got the wrong speed on. It helps to go the right speed. Which for this should be when you're drilling, be fast. All right, and then you go down to the next one and get that one put in. Down 
down here and do the bottom one. All right, and then once you get it drilled, you should have three little holes. It doesn't have to necessarily be perfect, but it just needs to be in there, okay? Um, the more perfect it is, the more nicer it looks. It depends on how much effort you want to put into it. So, once we get those done, then we'll, uh, I'm going to switch over real quick because this wood is so soft, I'm afraid to use it with an impact <coughs> drill. But, uh, this is where you want to get that little extender there to make your life easy. Stick it into your drill or impact gun, just depending on what you're using. And then use the proper bit for whatever screw you're using. And for me, I do believe that's it. Or maybe it's not. That's a, it's this one right here, and I'm just fussing and fighting since I'm just using regular old screws. Yes, sir, that's it. So you guys will need to use one of those with the bit. I have one of the shorties here, and that's going to work just fine for me. All right, so now what you want to do is take that Loctite glue, all right? Nope. Oh. And uh, grab a, a wet paper towel real fast. And uh, Oops, a little too hard there, Jason. You're going to put just a little dab of glue over each hole. All right. So you have a little dab of glue. Kind of hard to get that angle in there. Take your finger, kind of smash that glue down there a little bit. All right, and then go ahead and come back and put another just little dot over the top. The reason I like to do this is I like to start it in the hole, and then it's actually these little globs, when you go through it with the screw, it will grab the glue and take it down with it. All right, so you'll find that hole You'll get it in that hole like that. And then you'll screw it in. All right. Now you, you do the rest of them like that. All right. Real quick, let me... Uh, do my other three real fast, or two other ones real fast. Once you get them down in there, you're going to have a little excess glue and you're just going to wipe it off. And you see what I mean by uh, that pine so soft it, it even sunk really 
further than I wanted to just using the drill. <clears throat> so, but you guys won't have that problem with that good treated lumber. So, once you get that done, we're going to go ahead and twist the board. And what we're going to do is try to be very careful, as you see, that one butts up to that one, and you're going to come over that way.